Well, here we are on the home stretch, our final hour of this Thursday edition of America Talks Live. On Friday, Junior, and we're almost rolling into that uh, Friday. Yeah. All right, over the Independence Day holiday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell spoke to a group of community leaders in Kentucky. He addressed the topic of school shootings. McConnell said that there wasn't really much that can be done on the federal level to prevent such tragedies, but our next guest might disagree. He is a junior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and a survivor of the horrific shooting that happened there on Valentine's Day, February 14th of this year. He is the new director of high school outreach for Turning Point USA. Kyle Kashev, welcome to America Talks Live. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for having me. Kyle, Mitch McConnell says there's not much that Congress can do to address school shootings. Do you agree with that? Uh, that's not quite what he said at all. Um, he said that the local, state, and federal level have to work together on school safety. And many times he said that it is extremely important um, to make sure that our schools are secure. So that's not true. Well, it seems like these tragedies are just politicized and re-politicized. And it seems there's nothing politicians really love to do more than to sort of, I hate to say this, but almost use children and tragedy to push a political agenda. You got to see that firsthand. Tell us about it. Yeah, what I think is even a, even a little bit more disgusting and abhorrent is that the mainstream media is continuously plaguing and, and representing Republicans like, like don't care about dead kids. And I can personally tell you as the person who has gone through these tragedies, the Republicans do care. And I condemn the mainstream media in the, in the highest of forms for what they have been doing. Now, um, after the Parkland shooting happened, you decided to step up and become uh, really just a common sense voice. You, you said, you know, the abolition of guns wasn't the answer, uh, contrary to what a lot of your peers were saying. You took a different tack than the other survivors who've made a lot of national headlines uh, out there on the national stage. Do you believe that your message is sinking with your generation, though? Yeah, I think we've definitely seen that, not even with my generation, but overall in America, most of America agrees with my point of view and, you know, how the Second Amendment is extremely important and actually more of a pro than a con. How did you come to, to have this opinion that you have? Who, where, I mean, you had to learn this somewhere. It probably wasn't in a public school. Uh, where did you learn this? So right after the shooting, I really didn't have an opinion. I was leaned a little bit more towards the right. But I looked at the entire situation holistically, and I took all the facts from the right and the left. And I came to the a point of view that what the right is talking about and the Second Amendment is actually the correct way to go about this, and gun control isn't the correct way to go about this. So what are your answers then for these shootings? I know that Florida has passed a plethora of laws following the shooting. Do you think those laws will make a difference? Or, or what are your ideas for legislation that could be passed on the federal or state level? So what I think has been an absolute help to, ab to, to what I've been pushing um, is the leader, um, Senator Mitch McConnell. He's been doing a great job in pushing legislation. Uh, we got the Stop School Violence Act and the Fix Nix bill um, passed in March, and it's been an amazing help. He's really been pushing it, and it really shows that he does care about school safety. What's actually in those bills is that it fixes and it actually repairs the fix NICS, uh, the NICS background check. And it also provides in the Stop School Violence Act funding to harden or secure our schools and to make sure that we can have the proper um, you know, training for our students and our teachers to properly identify those threats. How frustrated are you with the amount of information that was out there that wasn't acted upon before this shooting? And has any of that been remedied in any way? It seemed to me like a lot of people needed to be fired uh, because they weren't doing their jobs. They weren't protecting children. Um, are you satisfied with the way that's all proceeding? Because we don't hear a lot of follow up news sometimes about these issues. So there are two things that have to happen. Ron C. needs to be fired and Sheriff Scott will need to be fired. They're both liars and they're both incompetent and they're not doing their jobs and they're consistently lying to the families of the victims because they didn't do their job properly. Well, with Runsey, just to clarify, Kyle, so you're talking about Robert Runsey, the superintendent of the Broward uh, mm -hmm. County Public Schools. Now, what we are know, what we do know is uh, what, we, what we were told is that the Florida Department of Law Enforcement report on Sheriff Scott Israel is due out early next week. And the procedure in Florida, if the Florida Department of Law Enforcement determines that he acted improperly, which I believe he did, I think he needs to go, the governor will suspend him, and then the state senate has to come back into a special session to then legally remove him. You've been out there, you're an activist. Are you hearing anything? Are you getting any indicators as to whether or not that is going to happen, and if it is, when? 
What I can tell you is that the overwhelming majority of every single person I've talked to in Parkland wants to see Sheriff Scott Israel fired immediately because he did not do his job. And he, he specifically was complicit, I would say, in a lot of the failures and the multidimensional failures that happened in Parkland. Right. Um, so uh, it, one of the things that I know has happened to you on your journey is that uh, you've had the opportunity to meet and speak with a lot of politicians, I believe even up and including up to and including the president. Um, how reassured are you that we can uh, combine our best data and our best prevention methods and prevent another school shooting ever happening? Yeah, so here's what needs to be ha here needs to happen. Uh, as the leader said, this needs to be on the local state and federal level, not just the federal level. All the levels need to be working together to make sure that we secure schools. That's the only way that we can actually have secure schools. We need to make sure that we have armed guards at every single school. We have single point entries. We have metal detectors. There's absolutely no reason why our courtrooms and our airports and our senator buildings should be more protected than our kids. Well, I just want, real quickly want to ask you, we've seen a lot of uh, David Hogg, uh, one of your fellow classmates. He's kind of been the spokesperson on the opposite end of the spectrum of the issue. Uh, he believes that guns aren't the answer. We see him all over mainstream media outlets. Have you had any interaction with him? Do you guys debate, have a discussion, like an honest conversation? So, yeah, I haven't talked to him much. Um, I've reached out to him multiple times. I'd really love to have a debate with him, not just, not just to make it a big media show. I don't want that. Sure. I want to... I want to sit down with him and really talk to him and reach a conclusion because I really think that that's the only way to, to get a solution if both sides come together. And that's why I met with countless um, Democratic legislators when I came to D.C. Because the only way to push legislation is to make sure that we have people on the left and the right working together for a common solution. And, and have they been very respectful towards you? I'm just curious because, you know, we were just talking to some people that sometimes if they aren't agreeing what so many other people are agreeing with that they see on these mainstream media outlets that they can almost be kind of cast aside. Are they being responsive to you, civil towards you, because just because you happen to disagree with them? So, yeah, um, what I can say specifically um, is that, you know, we've, we've been very respectful to each other. I think that's been a great thing. But what's even worse with me is that what's quite interesting is when I go to school, um, there's an insane amount of animosity towards me because I'm conservative. Um, so I get stare downs and people threaten to beat me up because I'm conservative. And it's quite saddening because that's the state of our nation, that if someone has a political belief in you, they're, they're immediately the enemy. Kyle, let me ask you a question. What, what are you seeing in terms of security at Stoneman Douglas uh, now that you didn't see prior to the shooting? So yeah, I still have the belief that the exact same thing could happen um, practically tomorrow if school's in session because nothing has really changed. Wow. I mean, nothing truly has changed. The exact same shooting could happen at practically any other school across the nation. Schools aren't being hardened, they aren't being secured, and they should be. The only thing that's holding them back, I would say, is that people just, just don't understand the importance of actually getting an immediate action done. They're too busy talking about gun control than actually looking for a solution. Look, I've always said, uh, as the leader, Mitch, as the leader um, McConnell has done, let's get an immediate solution that secures our schools and then let's let's talk about guns because the first but, thing we have but to Kyle, do is, what I want to do is, are you seeing anything different at Stoneman Douglas specifically? Is the school more fortified than it was prior to February 14th? There are more officers on duty on campus, but in reality, the exact same thing could happen tomorrow. Why is that? Why is that? Because you're saying it's not hardened. I mean, can, can you be more specific? Because I know I'm something that because I'm saying someone could clearly jump over the fence with a gun and do the mm. exact same thing okay. that happened. That's terrifying. Okay. Well, you are making changes. You are doing something about this, and I love this. Tell us about the uh, Turning Point USA uh, event that you are having and your scholarship, which I think is it, tremendously exciting and innovative for the kids who want to come to the summit. Awesome. So in July 23rd to 26th in D.C., uh, Turning Point is hosting a high school leadership summit with some amazing speakers like uh, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Rand Paul. Uh, the list goes on and on, really. And what Charlie and I, we sat down, we wanted to give those kids from Stoneman Douglas who haven't been heard of, either they're conservative or not, they have the opportunity to interact and to talk with these legislators in D.C. So I said, Charlie, look, let's try to get a scholarship for all the Stoneman Douglas kids and pay for absolutely everything. Uh, let's cover all financial costs so they can come to D.C. And, he, and Charlie went above and beyond the Call of Duty and has been fundraising in, intensely to give these kids from Stoneman Douglas the opportunity to come to D.C. Now, how many kids do you have participating at this point? And it's early, but how many do you have participating? So right now we have 1,000 confirmations, which is quite wow. awesome. Wow. Um, and we have, I think, 
70, around 70 kids from Stoneman Douglas, if I'm, if I'm not mm. mistaken, coming to the event. And some of my children will be there. I will be participating in the program as well. Um, what is your hope for this? What do you hope that kids take away from this? Look, I really want to open kids' eyes. Um, that's what I really want to do, and I want them to learn about our free market and free speech. Even if they're, if they're on the left or the right, that's why we've been so opening from anyone from Stoneman Douglas or anyone in, in general to come to this event, learn about conservatism, learn about free speech and free markets, and just, be, just go there and, and learn about how, you know, what, what made our nation so great. Well, it's very exciting. I'm super honored to be a part of it. And I know that you're going to have a great uh, program for everyone. And uh, th this, this is a great opportunity to put young minds together and uh, come up with great solutions. I think it's amazing what you've done, um, really taking yourself from tragedy to triumph in a lot of ways. Kyle Kashev, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us today. Great job, Kyle.